Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique and we're back again with another alcohol ink tutorial. This time we're going to throw in a little glitter. I'm going to show you how to do this really cool galaxy technique that I learned from my friend Annika Swenson years ago. It's super cool. I initially use this technique to create my eyeball galaxy design and i'm going to show you how to do that today i'm going to have all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box might even find some discount codes for you there as well so that's enough chit chat for me let's go ahead and get started all right you guys so we're starting with a cup that i've already spray painted with a flat white spray paint and then I coated it with 30 milliliters of epoxy that had a fine white glitter mixed into it. This is what I call like the quick glitter technique. You guys have seen me do this a million times on the channel. Um, and this cup is old. Like I've had this sitting in my shop for a while. It's like starting to yellow because I used like a fast setting epoxy on it. Um, so if you have a cup like this just laying around, this is a great project to do with it. I'm going to sand down the rim like I normally do. This is so our final coats of epoxy have something to adhere to to create the seal for our cup on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. But this time I'm gonna sand it down a little more than usual because after we do our alcohol inks, I'm gonna inevitably have to sand it down again. And I don't wanna sand down too far through the alcohol ink and expose this white glittered section, okay? So it's important to sand down early ahead of the game because we're gonna sand down again later and I'll show you that later in the video. <laughs> All right, next I've got some flat white spray paint and I wanna spray paint just one small dot. This step is optional, but it's going to give so much more depth and dimension and detail to your water slide that we'll apply later. So just a small dot, see, that's all we need. This is where I'm gonna apply the eyeball water slide later on and you'll see what I mean. So our first step now is to paint the nebulas with our alcohol inks. I showed you guys a couple weeks ago how I like to do alcohol inks. I've got a magic eraser here and I'm just gonna rip off one piece for each color. And I'm gonna start with kind of my most bold color which is purple in this case. You can use whatever colors you want. Nebulas come in all kinds of colors and I just think it's really fun to experiment with different color combinations on these. Whether you want to do multicolors or, you know, all one color family, totally up to you. Of course, you guys know I'm using my girl Jen's alcohol inks. These are from jenscraftedgems.com. She's still out of stock, <laughs> but she's supposed to restock this month, so we'll see. Okay, guys, um, but you can use, you know, your favorite alcohol inks for these, um, and this is really kind of just a no-brainer. You want to just layer up the colors. Every time you add a new color, you create new detail and cells and dimensions. So pretty. So I'm just doing kind of like a pink and green and purple sort of vibe. In these steps, we're also kind of laying out where we want all of our nebulas and how many. I think I don't think less is more on this, but just kind of have balance. You don't want to do too many of these. Maybe like one as the focal point and then three or four as some added details. If you find that you've gotten a little too heavy handed with the ink and it might look a little muddled, just rip off a clean part of the magic eraser, get some rubbing alcohol and dab that through and kind of clean up some of those areas. That's also going to help you blend as well and spread your inks out. So you'll notice like on the edge of each of the nebulas that I've done, I've taken the clean magic eraser with just alcohol only to blend out the edges so that they look a little bit more organic. Anywhere that it looks like you just stamp some ink on with some sponge painting, go over that with a little rubbing alcohol and the clean sponge just to make it look more organic and blended. I'm going to keep messing with this until I'm happy with what I've got 
If at a certain point you feel like you're getting frustrated or you've just been looking at it for way too long, put your cup down, walk away, take a deep breath, get a, get a drink of water or a Diet Coke or whatever you need and come back to it with a fresh set of eyes. You might find that you don't need to do anything at all and maybe you just need to edit a few places. That's fine, but don't overdo it, okay? Because we're going to be messing around with this later when we go over and fill in the black sections of our galaxy. You want to let these inks dry for a good hour or so and then I went over it with Rust-Oleum 2 times clear gloss paint. You'll notice that my inks did fade a little bit in vibrancy and that's because I did not wait long enough to clear coat these and I also didn't shake my clear coat spray paint long enough. So I got a little bit of fading but that's okay. We can fix it at this spot. This is my water slide. I've already printed the Galaxy Eye image on some clear water slide. I used my Canon Pixma MX92 inkjet printer and I printed this on Kodiak brand clear water slide. I sealed it three times with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint and now I'm going to rip it out okay i want to have those organic ripped edges i don't want to cut it this is going to help me blend it better i've got some lukewarm water here uh please don't ask me where i found this image i got it on google from a long time ago when i made originally made this custom order for a customer of mine and i have not been able to find it since however if you google galaxy eye you a ton of images will come up okay so we're just going to apply this like i normally would we want to get our cup slightly wet with our transfer paper then slide that right off onto that white dot of spray paint that we made earlier it's important that we sprayed that white dot before we sprayed the clear gloss spray paint to seal our inks because we don't want to apply our water slide to a foggy or matte surface. Otherwise, it's going to look weird underneath, okay? I'm just going to spread out all the wrinkles and bubbles with my silicone brush and then we'll dab off any water with our paper towel. And I'm going to let this dry for about a half hour or so before we move on to the next step. Obviously, this little eye detail is totally optional. I just wanted to include this from the original design that I did a while back because a lot of you asked me how I did that. <laughs> All right, so moving on, now I'm going in with the black alcohol ink. Jen's black alcohol ink is unlike any black alcohol ink I've ever used. It does not fade to purple or green like some of them I've used in the past. It is black black, <laughs> okay? It's almost too dark. So we're just gonna go around and cover all the white sections with this black alcohol ink. What that clear coat has done between the black and the colored sections that we did earlier is give us more control between blending. So since we've sealed in all those colors below, they're not going to get too messed up or disturbed by what we're going to be doing with this black alcohol ink. It also give us, gives us an opportunity to layer more color if we wanted to without things getting too muddled or, um, I don't know, just kind of messy, you know? So when you're going around with your black inks, you want to have a clean bit of the Magic Eraser sponge and just some plain rubbing alcohol to blend the black into the edges of those nebulas, okay? You don't want blunt edges of black around the colored sections that we did earlier. You want them to organically blend and kind of drag in the black into some of those sections. I also want to take some colors from the image, like the purple and the blue, and integrate more of that into my other colored sections as well, because I realized that those colors kind of clashed against the other <laughs> colors I used earlier. So I'm going to layer up some purple and blue through those other nebulas as well. You're going to start to see the edges of that water slide really blend in with the inks here and just keep adding more of the black, blend in with just the alcohol and rinse, wash, repeat. <laughs> That's really all it is. 
all the way around the cup and just keep messing with it until you're happy with what you've got. If you see a section that you want to add a little more color to, add a little color to it, you're not going to disturb that uh, clear coat barrier that we made earlier. You will a little bit, but it almost just sort of slows the blending down, if you will, uh, and it gives you a lot more control. But we're just gonna go all the way around until we're happy with it. Like I said earlier in the video, if you get to a point where you feel like you've been looking at it for too long, put the cup down, walk away, come back to it. Uh, this looks like it took a lot of time, but hands-on time between the colored sections that we did earlier and now the black and the blending only took a total of 20 minutes. So it's really not that bad. I let the inks dry overnight and now I'm ready to apply a coat of epoxy. I've got 30 milliliters already mixed here and I'm just gonna apply it like I normally would. If you wanted to add in some mica powders or some extra glitter or little stars or something, now would be a good time to do it. This is like the critical layer where you've got to add that stuff. I forgot to add that to this one, um, but I actually like the way it looked without them. I'll show one at the very end of the video that's all finished that has some of the mica powder in it. You don't need to add that, but if you wanted to just add an additional little detail. I let this layer dry for about six to eight hours before I moved on to the next step. Now we're ready to move on to our sanding. I've got a 80 grit sanding block here and I'm just gonna go around the top rim to expose a fine line of stainless steel. This is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the final seal for our tumbler on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. And I know what you're thinking, Jessica, you sanded it earlier in the video. <laughs> I know that. Remember, I told you guys, you got to sand down that first white and glitter layer so that when we get to this point and we have to sand down the black to again allow for adhesion on that little stainless steel line, um, we don't sand down too far and expose the white through the black, which would happen if we didn't preemptively sand <laughs> okay <laughs> so you don't got to sand down too much with these it's going to come off really easy okay just enough to expose that fine line there you can see how much I took off here we're going to clean this up with some rubbing alcohol and paper towels then I'm going to really quickly go in with my fine point Posca white acrylic paint marker and do just tiny little dots for stars obviously a super extra detail, but I just think it's so cute. So I'm going to do this really quick. I think I spent a total of like 60 seconds putting in these tiny little dots. And then we were ready for our final coats of epoxy. Before I put on my final coats though, I always try to go over my cup with some tack cloth. I do this for every single cup. I just usually don't include it in the video because I get a lot of questions or people debating whether or not this ruins your cups. You guys, I use this every single time uh, right before my final coat and it just removes any kind of lint or debris before we do our final coats. I will link the exact tack cloth that I use down below in the description box. And if you struggle with getting a little lint and bumpies on your cup, this is gonna really help you a lot. This cup took two final coats back to back. So what I mean by that is this coat I'm applying now is 30 milliliters of Illumilite's amazing clear cast, just the regular formula. Once this dried after about six to eight hours, I went over this with the Illumilite amazing clear cast plus that has the enhanced UV protection in it. So it's going to keep these colors bright and beautiful for a very long time. Uh, and I say back to back because I don't take the cup off the turner before I apply that second coat. This also helps to eliminate, almost eliminate, <laughs> the likelihood of anything getting on this cup to mess with uh, a true final coat. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you like my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.
And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.